Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How much is too much for a living? When does a lifestyle corrupt a person's journey to his Lord? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's a very good question. Now I'm going to answer this question, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, with the permission of my Shaykh, with his support. To a person who is asking it generally, who is not following a Shaykh. When does a lifestyle corrupt a person's journey to his Lord? that lifestyle will corrupt when the man falls in love with it. And you know that you don't have to read any book to understand. You don't have to ask anyone to understand if you are in love with the lifestyle you are leading or not. It's easy. Same way you love someone, when you love someone, you're always thinking about that one. You're waking up, you're thinking, you're going to sleep, you're thinking, you're eating, you're thinking. You want to be always to be with that one. Thinking about the times you were with that one. You're obsessed with it. That obsession, I don't like to use that word, but that obsession has to be for Allah and His Prophet. Step by step, first through the inheritors of the prophets, the shaykhs, the saints of Allah. When you're waking up, you're thinking about a sh your shaykh who is representing the prophet. Therefore, he's like a mirror of the prophet. Then you're going to sleep, you're thinking about your prophet, about your shaykh. Then throughout the day, you're always thinking about your shaykh, what he's saying, how you're going to please him, what is good, what is... Then that time, you're well on your way. You're under Siratul Mustaqim. Yes. Because now, that one especially, that one who is on the way of the prophets, the prophet is on the way of Allah, then it's the same as pleasing Allah. Of course, they are not prophets, they are not Allah, but now they are representing. And they have finished with everything, they are finished with their desires, they are finished with everything, and they have already disappeared in the oceans of their Lord. So, but if you have a lifestyle and you're waking up and you're going through your day and you're sleeping thinking about your lifestyle, waking up thinking about your job, how much you're going to earn, thinking about your family, I'm not saying this is evil, we're supposed to be thinking, but if it occupies your mind more than it occupies more than the remembrance of Allah and His Prophet is occupying your mind, then that's the time when you're saying that there is an imbalance. I'm not going to say the lifestyle is corrupting your faith, but there is no balance there. There's no balance there. Because you're just concerned again about this dunya. Anything that distracts you from Allah is a dunya. That time it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire, or you are a garbage collector. It's not the amount of money now. Of course, if there is more money, there is more pull, there is more attraction to the dunya. But it used to be in the old days, the poor people, they are very humble, they are very nice, and they are not running for the dunya. But in these days, in so many parts of the world, you see poor people, because they have lost their faith now, they are more obsessed about the dunya than the ones who have. They're always thinking money can solve everything. Money can change everything. There are people who believe that. If only I have money, then my whole life is going to be perfect. I'm going to be happy. I can solve every problem. It's not only individuals or communities thinking this. Whole regimes and governments are pushing this down to our throats, isn't it? Everything is an economic crisis. Everything they say, if only the economically people are okay, then all the problems are going to be solved. It is not. It's much deeper and it's much wider than that. So your lifestyle will corrupt your journey to your Lord if your lifestyle is not on the same road, is not on the same road reaching to the destination of your Lord. If your lifestyle is making a deviation from 
your journey. If you have a share now, <coughs> fine, and in San Kamil Murshid, the share that is guiding you, a share that is going to bring you to the Ahirat life, a share that is going to make you to understand yourself and understand your Lord. The Sheikh that is not going to talk about the dunya. The Sheikh is just going to concentrate on the Ahirat life and the ego and the uh, veils of your heart and how to remove them to come close to Allah. The Sheikh that is concentrating how to turn the nafsu amara, the disobedient ego, into an obedient ego. That Sheikh now, ask him, consult with him. Like I said, once you start to occupy your heart with Allah or His Prophet or those who are, whom Allah loves, once that heart is correct, then that heart it will guide the rest of your body how to behave. That time it doesn't matter. Again, if you're a billionaire or you're a garbage collector. If you're a garbage collector, your lifestyle will not corrupt you. And if you're a billionaire, you may use that wealth, you may use that influence now to help Islam, to help the truth, and to help people. Understand? Then, that time, your lifestyle is not going to corrupt. It comes down again to guidance. Who is going to guide? We're not saying everyone should leave everything and come and live in the caves, in the mountains. No, it is not. There are some Sahabi Kiram, Holy Prophet Islam, says, leave everything and come with me. There are some who says, leave me and go. So the real Shaykh must know then how to work with the Murids, how to work with those ones who are following him. And if he sees, at the end of the day, he sees that the heart is remembering Allah that is the most important thing then that time it doesn't matter if that one is far away or near doing things outside or doing things inside there was one sahabi who was living with the prophet eating with him praying with him doing everything with him but his heart was for the dunya he was a sahabi Ibn Salama. His heart was for the dunya. He was every day, he was sweeping the masjid of the Prophet. And he asked, insisting over and over again. You understand? Insistence. Asking over and over again. Please pray that something open up for me, the dunya open up. Prophet ﷺ kept quiet and said, it's not for you. Don't you want to live like how your prophet lives, simple. But he's coming up with a lot of excuses. The majority of the Muslims now, they're also saying, no, 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 if I get more money, I can help the ummah. Uh, that is wrong. First, help yourself. Where you come up with such arrogance to say, I'm going to help the ummah. I'm going to help. So many people who say, I'm going to help, they end up not helping. But those who say, I need help, they end up helping. So if the Salama says, no, I'm going to help, you know, I can make money, I can help them, da da da. Prophet says, it's not for you. He insisted, he insisted, finally, Prophet opened his hand, whatever Prophet prayed for, Allah gives. And now Ibn Salama is a long story. He became, he got into some uh, property, some wealth, some animals. He moved out from the Prophet's mosque, he moved out of Medina, his property grew and grew and grew. He became very rich. And when the time came to collect the zakat, to help the ummah, the Prophet sent sahabis to collect, going around to collect. They came to Ibn Salama. And Prophet was asking before that, where is Ibn Salama? They said, he moved out, Ya Rasulullah. Prophet didn't say nothing, just kept quiet. And when the time came to collect the zakat, it came to Ibn Salama. 
when the Sahabi said, this is what order came down to us. Zakat, you have to give. It will purify your wealth and it will help. Ibn Salama is saying, what? Now Muhammad is asking for a bribe from us. Astaghfirullah. So when those messengers, they came back, Prophet saw them coming and knew the news. Before those messengers came, the Prophet says, Oh, Ibn Salama, you have lost and you have lost and you have lost. That one was spending his whole life almost in the masjid. And there's so many other Sahabis that they have so much wealth that they were far away from the Prophet. But their heart is with the Prophet. And that time, their lifestyle does not corrupt. Because what is in your heart, it is most important. If you're holding on to a Shaykh, and you put your Shaykh in your heart, and your Shaykh now will bring you to the Prophet. Now, that time, it doesn't matter what job that you are doing, it is going to help Islam. And maybe that is going to change. Maybe the, the Shaykh will say, for this time you're going to live here, later you're going to live out. Now you're going to live out, later you're going to live here. That must change, because every murid is, is a different one. But once you start doing that, yes, then that time, your lifestyle will not corrupt your journey. People have a wrong idea too. They're thinking that to be Muslim. Now, uh, number one, you have to have a lot of wealth. No, it doesn't. Some saying that sign of a true Muslim, now you have to be very poor. It's not that too. You have to have moderation. Moderate. The most important thing is to have a simple lifestyle. If you have a simple life, that time it doesn't matter where you live. You can live in a palace. But you insist on having a simple life, you will. People, they get very jealous from us, of course. Because now they're seeing pictures of the masjid, seeing pictures of this. And some people, they're saying, we spent five million dollars on this masjid. <laughs> and it's not even finished yet. <laughs> Imagine now it's finished, what they're going to say. But they're not thinking how we live. Huh? And how guilty we feel just because we have hot water over there. The reason for that is so that guys taking a shower, they're not going to fall sick, living in the mountains in the winter time. It's thinking we are living like that. But Alhamdulillah, we are very happy. We sleep on the floor. Whatever we eat, we share with everyone. And we try to live a simple life. And that's how people, they not understand the Khalifas. They're thinking the Khalifas is showing the majesty of Islam with all the wealth that the empire has. They are living that way. They are not living that way. They live like a dervish inside the palaces. So the understanding is, you can have, but whatever that you have in your hands, don't hold it tight. If you hold it tight, no more is going to come. Keep it loose. When it comes, it will come. And when it comes to your hand, it will flow out. And more will come because of that. Most important, whatever that is there, don't put it in your heart. Leave your heart only for Allah and His Prophet. Leave your heart only for those ones who are bringing you to Allah and His Prophet. That time, it's okay. Then your lifestyle will not corrupt your path to Allah because you know what to you do and you have the guidance and the consultation and that one will consult you say this is not necessary this is necessary now do this spend this buy this now this is not you know take this and do this inshallah rahman that time there's going to be balance assalamu alaikum